It's been a bitter cold season The whole time been buried in the snow well, David, thank you so much for agreeing to come here again. And, Absolutely. And <laughs> we don't normally do this. We don't normally have a follow-up to our featured artist. But because of what you had done with your Song of Day January, I was just really intrigued to find out more about the whole process and how it all turned out for you and kind of pull out from you some of the things that you learned from it that you might want to share with everyone. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let me first just tell everybody exactly what, what I did. Um, I For the last two years, I've basically committed to writing a song a day, uh, every day, for the month of January. I write a song from scratch every day, 31 songs, 31 days, and then post it uh, online at the end of the day. You know, songwriting is what I really, really care about. And, um, but I was finding that the, the, the business aspect of it, where, you know, whether it's booking shows or rehearsals or coordinating, you know, PR or, or whatever, um, that it, I don't know that it necessarily takes up so much time that I couldn't songwrite, but it takes up en enough emotional real estate that I was finding myself maybe writing six songs a year, and that just didn't seem like enough. Yeah. Yeah. So you also collaborated with several folks throughout the month. Tell me a little bit about that collaboration process. A lot of the people I haven't written a song with before, so we'll sit down and we'll just talk about, like, well, what do you normally do when you're writing a song? What's your normal process? Where do your ideas usually come from? I mean, do you usually start with a riff or, or is it, you know, you play around with chord progressions or harmonies or whatever? Um, or just specific topics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, turns of phrase. So, you know, that that's a good idea to get that idea. I've learned so much about other people's approach to songwriting. Uh, another uh, friend of mine, Kirk Bennett, we, we were talking and he, he had just watched a documentary on uh, wing suits, those little flying squirrel suits. And uh, so we wrote a song about that. Um, another person was a teacher and she had been uh, working on a math project. So we ended up writing a song about math and somebody had quit working at a bookstore. So we wrote about books, you know, so that was a common thing. What would you say has been the hardest part about doing this? What was the thing that like, did, or was there something that you like continually had to like push yourself through it to get it done? Well, the first year it was the anxiety. I will say that even though there was less anxiety, I was just as exhausted yes. <laughs> because I'm doing, because this was, I was committing like three to five hours every day. Every day, right. Uh, weekend, weekday. Yeah, weekday, matter, weekend. Yeah. And, yeah. and so there was no, no real break from the whole thing. It sounds like from what you said that, you know, some of the, the songs that you really sort of weren't feeling it at the time, you know, you were just kind of tired and, you know, that they actually came out you know, better than you thought they would? Absolutely, yeah, that was definitely, um, yeah, one of the big lessons that I've found through the whole process, and this is true for solo uh, songwriting or, or co-writes, was that how I felt during the writing process uh, did not equate to how good the song was. Um, one of the great things about um, posting every day is you get feedback from people immediately, uh -huh. uh, and there are, You'll often, I would often find that the ones that I hated writing the most mm -hmm. uh, were the ones that people liked the best, or at least better than a lot of the songs. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of interesting because it kind of brings up that whole idea that songs tend to have this life of their own outside and separate from you. So you create mm -hmm. them and you work on them and you put them out there and whatever meaning you may have put into it may be completely different than what the listener hears from it. The, the perceptions people have of things right. are very different than your own perceptions. Right. And oftentimes songs that don't mean much to me, mm -hmm. that I just tossed off, um, are ones that end up really resonating with other people. So what would you say the, the key is? Like, wh what is it just just do you? Or what, I mean, how would you, how would you frame that up? Yeah, I, I, I think that if you do something that's interesting for you, that it'll be interesting to other people. I mean, you're not an island. So it's good to set a limit, maybe. Uh, that, that was something that was good about the, uh, the Song of Day process, mm -hmm. is just um, having a, 
established deadline every day, mm-hmm. knowing that the, the goal was to have a complete song, right. that structurally at least, a complete song yeah. by the end. So you have all this material now from last year and then this year. So what are you going to do with all of it? Are you planning on evolving some of them further? Or are they just going to sit on a shelf? Or what are you, you going to do with it all? Most of the songs from last year uh, did get incorporated into a show at one time or another during the year. Um, most of the co-writes got in... Uh, during uh, what I called my co-writer showcase. And um, I just got everybody that I wrote a song with together for one show, and it was complete chaos, absolute chaos. There was people bobbing in and out of the lineup. You know, some people were on longer than others because they were doing support, but, you know, everybody had one or two songs maybe they had written with me. And we were, but it was, it was complete chaos, but it was absolutely the most enjoyable uh, show that I've ever done. Mm-hmm. I absolutely enjoyed the hell out of it. And I'm hoping to do that again this year. So that's one thing Mm -hmm. that I hope to do is have that co-writer showcase again. I want to create a narrative uh, that kind of shows the progress of songwriting. Mm -hmm. So we have in January, that's the the rough drafts. All these first drafts are done. And as the year goes forward, I want to show, you know, the songs getting revised, maybe, you know, getting arranged, uh, eventually, hopefully get a nice, uh, uh, a nice kind of, professional recording or you know semi professional whatever i can afford and then <laughs> and then maybe shoot a music video so by the end of the year i'm hoping to have a handful of songs that have you know have gone through that whole process and hopefully captured on video in some fashion mm-hmm. or audio just capture it re- recorded in some fashion so that people can watch it uh, in addition to the songs that were written in january for a lot of the co-writes uh, i actually recorded footage of the co-writing process. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, like we did ours, and mm-hmm. I, I also did it with uh, Teresa Storch and Jay Stott and uh, several other folks. Um, and the the hope is to, to edit that down into a short, you know, five to ten minute uh, documentary or something mm-hmm. about just what the what happened during the writing process. Um, but I think it's, I think a lot of people out there that are not songwriters, mm-hmm. um, would are really, would be really interested in seeing how these things develop. Right. And at the same time, I think a lot of people who are songwriters uh, are, are probably interested to see how other people work. Right. You know, the, the things that people care about are so different from artist to artist. Right. Um, you know, melody may be a big deal for one person, and the other person is just like, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's just the chord progression or whatever that counts. Right, and, right. And it's, yeah, it's just it's just fascinating to, to learn and, and see what other folks are, are, are doing. So what advice would you have... For people who who want to do this or maybe more of this, like what have you learned that you could really like, you know, suggest to folks? So recognize that you're the way that you feel while you're writing it is not the same as the quality of the song. Um, number two, just have faith that you're capable of doing something. I think it's easy to just kind of feel like giving up, like you're not going anywhere. Um, but I think deadlines are really good for that. If you set that deadline, you say you're going to finish something uh, or make a commitment, I guess, is more of the thing. If you if you can say, I'm going to do it in this amount of time, uh, you know, good or bad, I'm going to finish it, mm-hmm. you'll oftentimes turn up something better than you think you're going to. Okay. So what would you say to people? What would your advice be um, to anyone who's struggling with a song or, you know, they're looking to other people saying, oh, my gosh, you know, I really I could never do that. I'm not, you know, really good enough to write a song or I'm not really skilled enough to write a song. How would you respond to that? Uh, Our insecurities are irrelevant to the quality of the song. Interesting. I don't know. It's just it's it really just doesn't. It doesn't have any bearing on how good the song's going to be. Mm-hmm. So just just forget about it and just do it. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So another big question. Are you going to do this again next year in 2020? I'm hoping that I can do it next year. I would love to do it next year. Um, and I'm hoping that, it, you know, I, if I could turn it into a little cottage industry, uh, you know, if I actually can create this whole narrative during the year, mm-hmm. um, I'd love to make it a regular thing. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other thoughts or parting words or anything that you'd like to share with people songwriting is a really fun thing to do <laughs> don't be daunted by it just just have fun with it yeah i think that's great advice just do it yeah this is we're going to create uh, a collaborative piece of art <laughs>
<laughs> Bye, everybody. This was Bye. fun. Thanks, Trish. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. It's been a bitter cold season. The whole time. Sean.